Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, in lawsuit, woman says former Bishop Gerken staff member sexually assaulted her. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. Back in the day, Bell Tapes knew that if we provided quality products and honest service, customers would come back again and again. Have things changed? Sure. But what hasn't is Bell Tapes' commitment to giving you a fair price and friendly service. Visit us at belltapes.com. According to the lawsuit, brother Sean McEnany was charged with two counts of having unlawful sexual contact with a 15-year-old girl at a school in Maine, where he was employed in 1988. He pled guilty to the charges, was registered as a sex offender, and was ordered not to teach in Maine. The lawsuit says two years later he was hired at Bishop Girton High School, a private Catholic school in Nashua, despite staff having knowledge of his past and the fact that he had not registered as a sex offender in New Hampshire. It was an all-boys school. It did become co-ed in 1992. At the time, the lawsuit says both schools were operated by the Brothers of the Sacred Heart of New England. The alleged victim in this case says she was sexually assaulted by McEnany on two separate occasions in 1995 inside classrooms at the school during school hours. In 1997, he was charged with failing to register as a sex offender in New Hampshire. McEnany has not worked at the school since that year and has since passed away. Lawyers for the alleged victim say in the lawsuit that they believe the school was neglectful in hiring McEnany and should have known that he was dangerous and a threat to students. Bishop Gurton is responding tonight saying the school knows that sexual misconduct committed by a teacher, especially one who's a religious brother, violates human dignity and is contrary to school principles and to their mission. Now, the school did send home a letter to current students today. They will also be reaching out to the alleged victim in this case. We're live in Nashua. Kristen Carosa, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Three bodies found at home associated with kidnapping suspect. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Is hip or knee pain slowing you down? I'm Dr. Jake Brew, an orthopedic surgeon at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Learn about the advances in joint replacement surgery and find out why younger people are now having the procedure at wcvb.com slash health. Investigators continued working tonight in and around the Springfield house where human remains had already been found, yet another shocking discovery. We did uh, inform members of the public earlier today that two bodies were recovered. Uh, I am now confirming that a third body was recovered on the property. A horrific crime scene on Page Boulevard, where Stuart Weldon lives. Neighbors called the 40-year-old reclusive and menacing. They ran in there with shovels, and then now you, you can tell, but they blocked everything out, so... But whatever it is, it can't be good. A grotesque unearthing initiated after a wild police chase Sunday night. Police finding in Weldon's car a brutalized woman who claimed she'd been held captive for a month, raped and beat with a hammer whenever Weldon got angry. She thanked police for saving her life, saying, I didn't think I was ever going to get away. It's alarming. It's scary, you know, because you don't know your neighbors. A man and a woman in their 20s who lived with Weldon haven't been seen for weeks. Neighbors say when he was last seen Sunday, he was acting strange. Officials not revealing the sex or age of the bodies or at this point naming Weldon a suspect. I did say to the public uh, earlier today that there is no reason to have any heightened sense of danger or threat. Weldon, who has an extensive criminal record, 
is being held on a million dollar bail on that kidnapping charge. Police expect to be at his house at least through the weekend. Lots of work left to do. And okay, and there you go on that video and that report. These young children should not have died, LePage says about DHHS report. Let's take a listen to the video from WNTW News 8 Maine. Today's modern past phrase of the day is... Top quiz. Tell me everything you know about deer ticks. The black legged or deer tick, Ixodes scapularis. To learn more, visit our pest library online at modernpest.com. The governor kicked off this hearing by saying he wants to make sure these two young girls didn't die in vain. He says the child welfare system is broken and it must be fixed. These young children should not have died. They should not have died. Governor LePage is talking about Marissa Kennedy and Kendall Chick. Both of the young girls were murdered within months of each other. Once you read these cases, I'll tell you, you'll have nightmares. These, these cases are horrific because they could have been prevented. That's what makes it so sad is they should and could have been prevented. Today, the Oversight Committee held a hearing on an investigation into the state's handling of the two cases. The governor says he's working on legislation and budgets to improve Maine's child protection system. I think this is more important than anything else this legislature's done. And, and, and it's something we've been working on every year, and the only time it gets attention is when there's a tragedy. The only time you get the legislature to react is when there's a tragedy. LePage made some recommendations that include prioritizing a child's best interest over family reunification, upgrading technology for better communication, and criminalizing the failure to report by a mandatory reporter. LePage and others who spoke during the hearing say caseworkers need training and support. These are very stressful jobs. These are very difficult jobs. I'm not sure any of us would love to do this. Lawmakers and health care providers who shared their suggestions all agree these improvements are necessary to protect Maine's children. Are we going to be perfect? No. Can we do a lot better? Much, much better. Governor LePage says that he's been working on legislation and budgets to help get these improvements done quickly. He said he'd even come back for a special session. Reporting at Augusta, Lauren Bradley, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Job growth seen reboost in May, but workers still looking for pay raise. Companies hired at a reboost piece in May, but workers are still not expected to have seen much change in their paychecks. John Goodman breaks his silence on Rosanna Barr's tweet. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. fallout from Roseanne's racist tweet. We're hearing from John Goodman and President Trump and our chief national correspondent Matt Gutman has the details on Roseanne who keeps on tweeting that. Good morning George. Another long night for Roseanne on Twitter. Since she announced Tuesday she was leaving Twitter she's posted nearly 
300 times, which includes more conspiracy theories and, again, comparisons of Valerie Jarrett to characters from Planet of the Apes. And someone like Jimmy Kimmel now suggesting this is not a Twitter meltdown, it's a mental health breakdown. Housekeeping! 24 hours after the cancellation of her show and those apologies on Twitter muddled with ambient excuses and even more controversial claims, Roseanne is back on the offensive, tweeting to her followers, you guys make me feel like fighting back. What's up, deplorable? The star then calling on her supporters Wednesday, tweeting, can you all help me get more followers here? The more I have, the more my words will have weight. I am tired of being smeared over a stupid mistake erasing 30 years of activism. That so-called mistake, which prompted ABC to immediately pull the plug on her show, was comparing a senior advisor under President Obama to an ape. And on Wednesday, Roseanne not just on the offensive, but offending again. Twice retweeting side-by-side -side images of Jarrett and characters from Planet of the Apes. What we're seeing right now, this internet meltdown, is not really new or different for her. Stan Zimmerman was a former writer on the original on, show. Yeah, she was always unpredictable. She was always having fun, it seemed like, although with crazy antics in the media. I think now it has you know, obviously crossed a line when it gets into racist comments that is completely unacceptable and forcing ABC into a corner. The Fallen Star now claiming she's being targeted by a group called the Follow Back Resistance, alleging they organized to silence conservatives, tweeting, hashtag FBR party. This group is an organized group that boycotts conservatives, Trump, and middle-of-the-road ideas. They muster up their folk to make thousands of calls to take people off the public airwaves. Look at Roseanne. I called her yesterday. The president weighing in on Twitter as well, but not condemning her tweets, instead asking for his own apology from ABC. Bob Iger of ABC called Valerie Jarrett to let her know that ABC does not tolerate comments like those made by Roseanne Barr. Gee, he never called President Donald J. Trump to apologize for the horrible statements made and said about me on ABC. Maybe I just didn't get the call. The White House saying the president was only calling out media bias. The president's pointing to the hypocrisy in the media, saying that the most horrible things about this president, uh, and nobody addresses it. This is a double standard that the president is speaking about. No one is defending her comments. They're inappropriate, but that's what the point that he was making. And this morning, for the first time, her TV work husband, John Goodman, speaking out from his home in New Orleans, saying he wasn't aware of his co-star's tweets, adding he would rather say nothing than cause more trouble. When asked how he felt about ABC suspending the show's Emmy promotion, he said, I wasn't going to win anyway. I've been up there 11 times, and if I didn't get one by now, I'm not going to. Now, Goodman and several of the cast members might yet be paid for the canceled show. Roseanne, who was estimated to have earned half a million dollars an episode, will not. And there's even talk now of rebooting the reboot without Roseanne, perhaps even focusing on the patriarch Dan, played by John Goodman. But as insiders tell us, it would be hard to do Roseanne without Roseanne. Guys? It wouldn't be difficult to do without. Yeah. A lot of those writers out of jobs now, too. So I know. You, you, you think about a the lot whole, of people the, the whole cruise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that did it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.